I mean, I think most of the pubs are actually applying for like one or two extra hours. But from November uh, this year, there's going to be the extending licensing laws. And there seems to be a story in the papers about it really every day now, doesn't there? And more than one story. Concerned about it, yeah. And you've got concerns as well. I have. It's really, really annoying me now because it's almost though some papers have decided that if the pubs stay open for longer than they do now, the world is going to end and we're all going to die. And it is, that every single day, there's like so many stories in the papers, scaremongering, oh, you're going to have to pay this council tax for police and the world's going to go mad, it's going to be hideous. It is just okay, so it's annoying. It's not a good thing, is it? It is a good yeah. thing. What could be worse? How can it possibly be worse by keeping pubs open? Okay, well, we're going to discuss this after the break. We are, so we'll talk about it after the break. But I have to say, how do you think Carol's doing on Grumpy Watch? Is the, is the blonde wig working, audience? <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'll go I'm back. Not grumpy. Back to normal after the break. Uh, join us in three when we'll be talking to a woman who was once the most notorious madam in the North. Hear her amazing story in just a couple of minutes. Back soon. <laughs> Wednesday's Loose Women, coming up, the man who loves to wash your dirty linen in public, tough talking with Jeremy Kyle later on. And can we just say a big warm welcome back to the real Carol McGiffin. Yay! It's me, it's me, it's you. Go it's on. definitely me. I'm never going to be a blonde. Go on, read a little Fun email no the real fun. Carol McGiffin. Okay, this is from Claire in Yorkshire. She says, I'm lucky enough to enjoy quite a good life. I don't have to work after inheriting a substantial amount some years ago. However, I hate the fact that because of this, people expect me to pay for everything when we go out. And when I don't offer to pay for the meals, the drinks, and the cinema, admissions, etc., then I get called stingy. Aww. But that's, see, that's what happens, isn't it? If you start flashing the cash, people expect yeah. you to buy everything. Do you everything. think she should? No, I don't. No, no, I don't think her friends should else. expect her to either. No. No. Jane? Oh, I've got one here from Maggie in Plymouth. Carol! What a difference the shade makes. <laughs> you look as though you should be running an Essex tal Essex, I'm off again. <laughs> Essex talent salon and a nail bar. Stick with a brunette look. It makes you look much more professional. Oh, wow, well, oh, I, I need that. Right. Yes. Yes. Very nice. What have you got, Kim? Well, I've got one from Alicia in Nottingham who says, People who've earned loads of cash tend to be quite frugal with it. They've earned it after all. People who've won the lottery or had cash handed to them tend to be the ones to spend, spend, spend. People who work hard for their cash know the value of it. Well, that's kind of true, that, isn't it? Mm. You know, you do get lottery people who kind of flash it. Not all mm. of them, right enough. Yeah, anyway, yeah. back to your rant about uh, drinking, Carol. So yeah. you're basically saying that it will make no difference and <coughs> what? I, I, don't, I don't think it will make the difference um, that the papers are making out it's going to make. I don't think that, that, that everybody, because the pubs might be open a bit longer, our, everyone is going to go to the pub and drink all that time. The thing is... The thing is, we need, to be, we need to be allowed to make the choice ourselves because the majority of the population, because all these people that go out binge drinking and, and causing trouble in town centres are the minority. You wouldn't think it to, to read the papers, but for the people who are responsible drinkers who want to go out for a drink, and I don't know why I'm pointing to myself when I say that, <laughs> but I am quite responsible, they should have the choice when they want to yeah. drink. I don't like being told that after 11 o'clock I can't buy a drink. I can't go to the supermarket on a Sunday morning but and buy Carol, some drinks on Sunday. But the fact is... It's just so annoying, the fact patronizing and childish. the last 30 years, alcohol consumption has risen considerably. It's risen con specifically within the 11 to 15 year old age group. It's now common for 25... 25 percent of 11 to 15 year olds to be drinking at least once a week. Where liver, they got to do when when they the liver, liver disease has increased you know, vastly, and, and, you know, people getting it much earlier and much younger age. Alcohol is just becoming normalised within our society. But it always, I think it always has been there. It's always been normal. But, you know, well, kids have, consumption I used risen. to take beer what? to school. Lots of people did. Yeah, but, you know, it's not changed. The thing is, you know about it now because it's a huge What's issue. What's wrong with a sandwich? <laughs> fill pages Look, you, with Listen, it. you and I, and, Only and one. The, you and I and people, you know, 30 plus aren't necessarily going to go out but what worries me is the younger generation the 18 year olds 19 year olds who do go out when they've had a skin but full of bail they fight anyway. they get they stupid go out anyway not all of them do it's very very patronizing oh, to say on. they all go out they all get drunk and they all start a fight because they yeah, don't no, but if even young people want to go out and have fun but why shouldn't they, they but do, if it's but so, if the pubs are open from 7 till 2 say they've got a longer time to be able to drink if they're open from 7 to 11 they've got to the whole thing because about binge drinking is drinking a whole load of alcohol in a very short space of time. Listen, lengthen the time and they won't binge drink, they'll just drink. <laughs> it's okay. so logical.
logical. OK, well, address, address the sort of health aspects of it, because there is great concern within the medical profession that we as a society, and OK, some people do and some people don't, but as a society, we are consuming too much alcohol, and it is having grave effects on our health. If the Does that not concern you? If the, the, the younger generation now are going to go out and get solid, whether it takes them two hours, three hours, or seven hours. Yeah. So, oh, so you still just accept that. You just accept it. We accept I'm not, alcohol I'm not consumption. Saying we that, accept no, drunkenness. There is a we problem. accept violence. We, do, we accept we do, health no, we, problems. We do know there is a big problem with youngsters drinking. There's health problems But I do everything. not think... 24-hour drinking is going to make a slight difference. difference. If they're drunk, they're drunk. Whether it's taking them two hours, four hours, or seven hours. What do the audience think? Final word. Make it worse or better? Daily Mail. That's a first, isn't it? You do. Yes, 24 and hour I drinking. Don't. 24 hour drinking. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's time to flash the cash. Yes, here's a reminder of today's competition. Which character appeared in the very first episode of Coronation Street? Was it A. Fred Elliott, B. Sarah Platt, or C. Ken Barlow? Call 9419 Calls cost one pound, but may vary from mobiles. Or text the word COMP followed by A, B or C to 63337. Each text costs £1 plus standard network charge. Entrance must be 18 or over. Terms and conditions at itv.com forward slash loose women. That's it. Get dialing. You can come and buy us a drink. Um, now, our next <laughs> guest became a sex worker when she was just 18 years old. For the next 15 years, she worked the streets and gained infamy as Yorkshire's most notorious madam, running a string of brothels. Please welcome Charlie Daniels. Hi, Charlie. Hi. Hi. Hello. Um, tell us, this tag of the most notorious madam in the north or in, in Yorkshire, how exactly do you earn yourself that tag? What constitutes that? Basically, by the sheer number of ladies that would have gone through my books. Um, there were quite a few. I owned a chain of very successful brothels and also organised lots of flats um, and was also involved in actively talking to the media about what I was doing as well. Did, did you actually work in in the brothel? I mean, were you working as a prostitute or were you just organised? Um, I, I, I originally did work. Um, I started on the streets at 18 with a baby to feed, um, then worked as a, um, an escort for a while and then ended up working privately from a flat and then started to run the brothels as well as working myself and I quit in 97. And was it lucrative, you know, when you were sort of built up this Extremely, empire? extremely, but I wouldn't do it again. What, was the, what was the turning point when it went from the seed of it to the, well it sounds quite, I know it sounds terrible, it sounds quite glamorous actually. 